Hello YouTube, this is Duango AC. I have Taskbot here, and he is going to play NES Jackal by ZYR2288 and AIQIYOU. That is a mouthful, so here's how it's spelled. This is a two-player TAS, and you can find this on tasvideos.org slash 4133m.html. Here goes. So this is Jackal. Jackal is an, a very unusual game in my personal opinion, um, but I've enjoyed watching it. So this two-player run, I like I like two-player runs. It's kind of hard to task two-player runs, gotta tell you. Uh, it can be pretty difficult, but um, I'm also not yet sure if this is going to sink the first time, but it seems good so far. So uh, there, there was one success and one failure. I uh, don't have any evidence to know whether or not it's going to work perfectly or not. <laughs> Here we go. So this was uh, this was actually an improvement. A few years ago, uh, ZYR2288 made a two-player task of Jackal with a time of 716, but he didn't submit it on task videos. It was improved by 355 frames, including a new technique, which is uh, shooting at the bottom of the screen to attack the enemy at the top of the screen. Uh, there's a little bit of collaboration that went back and forth between the two of them. You're well, then well welcome to connect, click on the submission notes, um, see the, the comments from the authors. And I have to say, I'm really glad that this is a two-player run because it definitely makes it more interesting. Um, this is a classic NES game. It's the kind of game that uh, you might remember playing as a kid. Maybe you remember this game fondly, maybe you've never heard of it, but it just looks like your everyday <laughs> NES game. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's an interesting question, isn't it? It just asks, here? So this is being played by TaskBot. If you're not familiar with TaskBot, this is a robot right here that is connected directly to a real NES console. He is pressing all of the buttons in order. This is the USA version of the run, or of the, of the game. And I gotta say, it's always fun when I get to see a task that I haven't even, even looked at sync. And because uh, so, a lot of times we see non-deterministic behavior and other bizarre things, and this one could still desync. I saw a, a situation where these two cars were just derping against the wall earlier. <laughs> no particular good reason. They were just driving into the corner. Um, so a lot of what's happening here is a lot like a player piano. All we have is a predefined sequence of button presses, and those are being pressed on the real console one right after another. The, yeah, no bootleg. Um, the thing that makes this tricky is the only thing that this task can see, or that the TaskBot can see, is when the console is asking for the next button presses. So if anything goes wrong, if I accidentally ESD shock this cart, or if uh, there's electromagnetic interference, or anything just changes a little bit, even one clock being missed is catastrophic to the run. So it's not necessarily always easy to get these perfect or have perfect commentary right up front especially for games that are not as reliable. Now, some games are very, very reliable. A game like Super Mario Brothers, just very, very consistent. It doesn't use any DPCM audio. The game is very consistent in how it operates. Uh, there's a little bit more, I guess you might say, um, that's the right word, freedom maybe is the right word. There's a lot more uh, grace. It's probably a better word for it. Margin for error. There's no fancy effects that might have tight timing. When you start moving into other consoles, especially the Super Nintendo, where there's two different clocks that are interacting, things get a lot more tricky. Uh, fortunately, this one has been behaving okay. So non-deterministic behavior on the NES is especially difficult for us to diagnose, and it's always nice to see things working as expected. So this particular task is a pretty good example of a run that has a fairly high re-record count. The authors of this task did 42,748 re-records for a seven-minute task. And that's pretty typical. A lot of times you are going to try and try and try again. And this means that they pressed the same key to back up and try again 42,000 times. <laughs> that's pretty typical. A tool-assisted speedrun, if you want to make it right, is an investment in time. It usually takes quite a lot of human effort to make something this fast. Sometimes people get the uh, the aspects of TaskBot mixed up with AI or other, other things that are automating the process. But this is human effort, playing through the game, working out with human knowledge, 
what the fastest route through the game is if you don't have to worry about human limitations of skill, reflexes, luck, memory, things like that. This is definitely a case where uh, you can see what we just saw. That would be impossible for a human to do perfectly, normally. In this case, the humans making this tool-assisted speedrun carefully tuned every last bit of this to de determine the best route through the game, to determine the best way to shoot. There's that off the screen, off the bottom thing I noted earlier, where they shot below the screen and managed to kill an enemy at the top of the screen through a wraparound effect. <laughs> it's pretty cool every time I see it happen. If you were a fan of this game from your childhood, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> this isn't my kind of game. I never got good at these. These games were always so hard. This type of top-down game, I was much more of a platformer kind of guy. Although, in fairness, I guess you could say that Legend of Zelda was a top-down, and somehow I did okay with that. But um, yeah, these types of games I just never did very good with. I, I was always terrible. So seeing them destroyed like this is actually a lot of fun. We made it! I love the comments they have. And yes, Solid Plasma. Taskbot is playing player one and player two at the same time. This does remind me of several other games I remember. It's just that classic feel. It actually reminds me of games made for the original Commodore 64 in its graphics style. This is looking good so far. I'm, I'm pretty happy to see this continuing to sync, so. Routing a game like this can also be a total pain. Figuring out which car, especially with two players. Um, and also one of the things I should note, when you're making a task, the process is actually pretty interesting. You're pressing down a series of, of buttons. Say player one is going up, player two is going right, player one is shooting, player two is not. So you're holding down a combination of buttons and then you're pressing a frame advance button on the keyboard. And sometimes it can be obnoxiously difficult to the point where you're trying to hold down so many buttons that your keyboard's like, nope, I'm done. <laughs> um, in key rollover is pretty handy. I have a DOS keyboard that is helpful for that. The process of making a task is a lot like trying to use a corded keyboard where you're holding down multiple keys, multiple buttons on your multiple buttons on the controller and each controller is mapped to buttons that you've predefined on the keyboard. You're holding down those buttons and tapping a frame advance key to advance forward. It can be kind of convoluted, but what's the fanfare this time? Well done. Your mission accomplished. There were a lot of games of this kind of art style and the fancy scene in the background. I love these kinds of things. Hey, this was Jackal by ZYR2288 and AIQIYOU. Check that out on taskvideos.org along with many other tool-assisted speedruns.